Welcome back to the Game Animation Sample Project third person shooter tutorial. This is a bit different. You don't have to watch the other episodes for this cover system, um, but this is the start of it. So it'll be going to cover and then moving along cover like so. And this will be the first video where we get the movement along the wall working and tracing for the wall for there as well. Um, and then after that, we'll do animations so that we can move along the wall and cover in our animations and peek along the wall as well. As usual, if you have any questions, I'll link the Discord below. If there's anything that seems to come up quite a lot, then I will add a FAQ to the description that you can follow and look at as well. And big shout out to our paid members, Dev Danny Diggs and Imagine Bravery. And you can check out what they're working on in the description as well. So thank you very much to them and I hope you enjoy our tutorial. Have a great day. Right, first things that we need to do is we're going to come into our TPS system. But if you've not been following this TPS tutorial, then you're fine just to like start from here. So you can right click and we can make a blueprint class and we want an actor component. We'll call this BPC cover. And then I'm gonna open that bad boy up delete these two events because I don't need them. And if you have these on the side, you can come up to this cog and show inherited variables. Uh, but if you haven't had this turned on, then those won't be there. Compile and save that. And now we're going to program a couple of bits and bobs. So we need an input button. So for now, we're going to get key event. Try to think of one that I've not used. I'm going to use zero because that's on the far side of my keyboard. And we want a variable in the top left. And this will be our in cover variable. So this will be whether we're in cover or not. You do want to come over here and make sure that its default is not in cover. Obviously, you've not started in cover. We're going to get pressed, drag off here, press B to get a branch. And we're going to check if we are in cover or not. If we are in cover, then we're just going to set it to not be in cover. That's pretty simple, pretty easy. And then from false, what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a line trace for by channel. Line trace by channel, because we want to be able to go against any object. And then we're going to right click, get owner. Get owner. And then we're going to get at uh, location to where we are in the world. And we're going to plug in the start to where we are. And then we're going to get a plus node. And we're going to plug the end of this plus node into end. So we've got to start and end, but actually this isn't really doing anything. So let's do something about that. So from get owner, we're going to do get actor rotation, which is to tell us which way we're facing. And then we're going to get forward, forward vector. And then we're going to multiply that. So multiply, put the end into the bottom of the add here and right click and convert the bottom of the multiply to float single position. Now you can make this into a variable if you want. This is just the cover trace distance and I'm going to just make this 150, 180, uh, 150. So then we're going to get our branch and get a return value. And if we have hit something on true, we're going to get in cover and set in cover to true. From out hit, I'm going to break the out hit. And then we are going to do two things. So we need to get this location and we're going to plus it. And then we're going to get the normal. We're going to make rot from X. And then from here, we're going to get forward vector. And we're going to multiply that. I'm going to pass this into the plus and this will be right click convert to a float and this will be 45. 
And then from this make rot from X, we're going to get a delta rotator. And this Z value here is going to be 180. And then from the true set here at the top, we're going to do move component two. So we're going to put the plus into the location and the delta into the rotation. Okay. So we're getting the rotation of the wall, it's forward vector times 45 degrees and adding that to the location that we've hit. And that's going to be our target. And then we're rotating our body by 180 degrees so that we are on the wall. So that animation makes sense. But we need to know which part we're moving. So this is move component two, but we haven't got a component. So we're going to do get owner, get component by class. And we want to do the capsule collision, which is our capsule component in our player. Show you that in a sec. So we want to connect the return value to component and press compile. And then we're going to open our content drawer and go to your player. Blueprints. Mine is CBP player, but yours might be CBP sandbox. So I'm going to put mine in sandbox because I want the enemies to inherit this as well. I'm going to press add and type in BPC cover. And then this capsule component is the thing that we're going to move to. So if we go back to BPC cover and turn on our draw debug type, we should now be able to play from here. Press zero to get a trace. And then we move our body to it, which is good. So. So what we need to do now is in BPC cover, we're going to need to move along the wall. So to do that, we're going to right click and create a custom event and custom event. And this will be move along wall event. And we're going to need a Spear trace. Let's go spear. Spear trace by channel. And then again, we need to get owner. And this time we're going to get right actor right vector. And we're going to get at a location. And then we're going to want to, again, get the forward vector, get actor forward vector. And then from get actor right vector, I want to get a multiply node. The top of this multiply node goes into a plus node. The plus node, the top of it goes into the start. And the bottom of the plus, we plug in get actor location. This times node, I need to drag out again and get another multiply. And this multiply needs to be converted to a float again. So two floats. Doesn't like being converted to a float on both of them. So we're going to put this float into move along wall. And then I'm going to right click the bottom one to convert that to a float as well. And this needs to be times by 55. We're going to plug in our input axis. So when we move left or right and call it, we're going to plug that in to this in a second. And then we're going to times that by 55. That's going to be the distance left or right that it's going to go. And that's going to then tell us whether it's left or right by 55 to the right vector. So if it's a minus one or a plus one to the right or left, and then we're going to add that to the actor location. And that's going to be the start. Don't worry, we're going to show all of it in action.
we get a multiply node from get at to forward vector and then we get another plus node and from the final plus on the start branch we're going to pull that into the top and then put the times into the bottom and the plus will need to go into the end this times node we're going to right click it and convert it to a float again and this will be 45 that's how far from the wall that we need to be on the return value i'm going to get a branch and on out hit i'm going to break the hit result on true we're going to do add movement input and we might need we're going to turn off context sensitive for that so we're going to add movement input here and then the world direction that we need is going to be from the normal make rot from x so we can turn content sensitive back on get the right vector multiply that and put that into the world direction right click to convert that to a float and put that into minus one and then the scale value is going to be this a value just here now if we compile that this will error because we haven't got a target target itself but actually the target is pawn so i'm going to right click and get owner and then plug that in to target i'm going to compile that now back in sandbox character we should have a ia move function ia move and what we're going to do is we're going to get bpc cover and get in cover and we're going to check if we are in cover in a branch if that's not true if that's false then we're going to keep going on this movement input and if it is true from bpc cover what we're going to do is get move along wall and then this a value needs to be the x value of this get movement input scale so we can connect that there if you're using an old sort of setup then this action value you right click it and split it and you want the action value of the x okay so now we can play from here press zero and we move along our wall up to the edge so there's a couple of things here the first one is you might need to extend your lines a little because sometimes the lines don't hit but more so that when you turn your camera like that right trace is going everywhere and so that makes no sense that left trace is doing the same we really want the traces to like stick with the mesh rather than rotate with the capsule but just because of the way gaps work so that's not really possible so we need to find a workaround for that and the workaround for it is in sandbox character we're going to add an arrow to the mesh i'm going to parent socket that to the root and that is fine it's fine that it's there and then we're going to compile and save that back in bpc cover we're going to select move along wall and we're going to add a new input and that new input will be of type arrow component so arrow component object reference and this will be facing front arrow back in sandbox character back in the event graph where we're doing this movement we want to drag this facing front arrow this arrow one into facing front arrow and compile that and then from bpc cover we're going to just change very slightly what we're doing so we're going to from facing front arrow we're going to get world location and this will replace the get at to
the get out to location one. So here we can get rid of this. We can also get rid of owner. Then from facing arrow, we're going to get the right vector. Get right vector. And this will place the get at to right vector. So just replace that there. And then finally, we're going to do the forward vector and just replace that one as well. And now when we play this, press zero, that'll stick with our character and be always pressing uh, forward. It will do that if it's detecting, see up to there it's detecting, and then we start to spin around and we spin around quickly. But when we have animations there, that's not going to do that. We might just want to increase this times. So I'm going to put this times to 55 as well on the get forward vector so that it always reaches the wall. There we go. Now it's sticking to the character a bit more. It's a bit easier to sort. And then we'll add animations for the next one.